Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at how we calculate rate of reaction, looking at plotting a graph and the gradient of the graph, an exam style question and finally a summary. So in order to calculate the rate of reaction we can monitor a number of things. First of all we can monitor the concentration of a reactant or a product. We could do this through the use of a titration. We could also monitor the gas volume of our product. We could use a gas syringe to collect the gases formed in a reaction that occurs within a sealed beaker. Or we could calculate the change in the masses of substances formed. And we could use a balance to measure the change in mass as our reaction proceeds. So once this data has been obtained, we could plot it on a graph, where on the x-axis we have the time taken, and on the y-axis we have the change in concentration. Now, we can actually use any physical quantity for our change in concentration on our y-axis. Could be the change in concentration of the product formed or the change in concentration of our reactant. As long as it changes during the reaction, we're able to use it. So in order to measure the rate of reaction, we need to measure the gradient of our graph. So here again, we see this curve showing the change in the concentration of our reactant as time proceeds. And you may know that the gradient of the graph is calculated by the change in y divided by the change in x. And on this graph, the change in y represents the change in concentration, and the change in x the change in time. And we know that the change in concentration divided by the time is equal to the rate. So the gradient of our graph gives us an indication of the rate of the reaction. So let's take a look at how we can monitor the changing rate of reaction. Initially, we calculate the rate at t equals zero. Now we do this by drawing a tangent that's a straight line to our curve. So what we'll see that initially at t equals zero, the gradient is the steepest. This is indicating to us that rate is the fastest at this initial point. If we then go ahead and draw another tangent later on in our curve, as the time for the reaction to take place has proceeded, we can already see that the gradient of our tangent has become less steep. This is indicating to us that the rate has decreased. So we can see that already the rate of the reaction has slowed down. And if we were to draw our final tangent at the end of our graph, when the reaction has come to completion, we'll be able to see that the gradient plateaus, it levels off. The reaction stops and we see the rate is now equal to zero. So we can see how we can use our graphs and the gradient of our graphs, drawing tangents at different points on our graphs to calculate the rate, to see how the rate of reaction changes as our reaction proceeds. Now I've shown you an example of a graph where we've used the change in concentration of the reactant on our y-axis. If we were to use the change in concentration of our product, we get a slightly different shaped graph. You can see the graph will look something like this, where rather than seeing a decrease in the concentration of the reactant, we see an increase in the concentration of our product as the reaction proceeds. A scientist is measuring the rate of reaction when magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid, and we have that reaction given to us here. We're asked what is meant by the term rate of reaction. Now we know that the rate of reaction is quite simply the rate of change of concentration of our reactants or our products per unit time. A nice and straightforward explanation. A nice and simple definition to get us that first mark. Moving on to the second part of the question. We're told that a scientist measures the total amount of hydrogen gas that's been produced every two minutes and plots the data on the following graph. We can see on our x-axis we've got time in minutes and on our y-axis we've got the volume of hydrogen gas produced in decimeters cubed. We can see we have these points on our graph here. So let's see what the first question is. What is the total amount of hydrogen gas evolved during the reaction? Well if we have a look we can see that we have a plateau off around here which if we measure it along is 0.5 decimeters cubed getting us another nice and simple one mark. Then we're asked to use the graph to estimate the initial rate of reaction in decimeters per cube per second. Now we know that a good way of estimating the initial rate of reaction is to measure the initial gradient. So going back to look at our graph, what we can do is we can draw a straight line like this, going through zero and going through our first point. We can calculate the gradient of this line or this section of this or the initial section of this line to calculate the initial rate. So if we have a look 
this is about 0 0.1246, 0 0.16, and our x value is about 1, 2. So, the gradient of our graph is the difference in y, which was 0 0.16, divided by the difference in x, which was 2, giving us 0 0.8 decimeters cubed per minute. Now, the questions asked for it in decimeters cubed per second. So we need to convert this into seconds. As we know, there are 60 seconds in a minute. We can do 0 0.8 multiplied by 60, which gives us 48. So that is 48 decimeters cubed per second. For this question, we'll receive our first mark for realizing we need to calculate the initial gradient and showing that line on our graph. The second is for calculating the rate of reaction decimeters cubed per minute, and the third for converting to decimeters cubed per second correctly. In part D, we're asked to draw another curve on the graph above, showing the results we'd expect if the initial concentration was halved. Well, if the initial concentration used was halved, we're going to get a lower initial rate, and we're going to have a plateau at half the maximum amount of hydrogen gas evolved. So let's take a look at what that might look like on our graph. So here I've drawn a line with those two features of a lower initial rate, as you can see by that decreased gradient in the initial portion, and a plateau at half the maximum, around 0 0.25 decimeters cubed. And those two marks were held for those two features shown in our graph, a lower initial rate and a plateau at half the max. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.